that angle two is congruent to five, so these two angles. Well, those are corresponding angles. So if they're congruent, then I know that line M is parallel to line N. So notice it doesn't start with saying, if two parallel lines right, are cut by a transversal, I'm making the conclusion, right? So then my conclusion is then the lines are parallel, okay? So that was because the two lines cut by a transversal formed congruent corresponding angles. Okay, so I wasn't given parallel lines this time, I was concluding, okay? Back up to the line before, this is our conclusion here. Our then statement, our conclusion is stating that the same side interior angles are supplementary. So your conclusion is after the word then. So if four is congruent to five, if I know that to be true, then I can state that M and N are parallel. So if two lines cut by a transversal form congruent, four and five are alternate interior. Then the lines are parallel. One and two. One and two are alternate exterior. So if two lines cut by a transversal form congruent, alternate exterior angles. Then I can conclude that M is parallel to N. So then the lines are parallel. And last, if two lines cut by, uh, cut by a transversal form supplementary, same side interior angles. Then I know that the lines are parallel. All right, next row. So just based on this one picture, so if A is parallel to B, so these two lines are parallel, and B is parallel to C, so B is parallel to A and B is parallel to C, that means that A is going to be parallel to C. Okay, this is not the substitution property. This is for the reason that if two lines are parallel to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. And the last statement and reason, which has nothing to do with parallel lines, but we're going to add it in here because we're going to use it. If BE bisects ABC, we know that an angle bisector divides, we already talked about it, the definition, an angle into two congruent angles. So that means the congruent angles are one and two. So let's take a look at our first proof. So our first proof says that angle one is congruent to three. So as I mentioned, always mark your givens in the picture. We also know that CE bisects DCB. So what does the bisector do? So if CE bisects, so CE is right here. That bisects, if I trace DC, B. So that means that angle three is congruent to angle four. For the reason an angle bisector divides an angle into two congruent angles. Now, since one's congruent to three and three is congruent to four, I can replace this three with its congruent part, the one, and I know that angle one is congruent to angle four by the substitution property. So if one is congruent to four, let's just shade in those angles. So one and four are formed by these two lines and this transversal, so those are corresponding angles. And remember, your proof statement's always going to go last, but yes, this does tell me that line CE is parallel to line AB. Okay, so this is my conclusion, so this will come after the word then. So it starts if 
two lines cut by a transversal form congruent, these are corresponding angles. Then, my conclusion, the lines are parallel. And now we're going to move into perpendicular lines, definitions and theorems. So based on this question right here, if we know that BAC is a right angle, then I can state that ray AB is perpendicular to ray AC, and that's the sign for perpendicular. Moving to the right, if I know that line AB is perpendicular to CD, then all four angles, one, two, three, and four, are right angles. They have to be 90 degrees. Here, if G and H form A, so if lines G and H, they form a blank of congruent angles. So they're saying these angles are congruent and they form a linear pair. Then the lines are perpendicular because if they're congruent, they must actually be both 90 degrees. And over here, if a line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines, so to start, M is parallel to N, and then line L is perpendicular to M. Well, if it's perpendicular to M, it must be perpendicular to N. So it's also perpendicular to the other line. In the last one, if two lines are perpendicular, uh, perpendicular to the same line, so we have M perpendicular to P, we have N perpendicular to P. So that must mean that M and N are parallel. In example five, it says that AB is parallel to CD. So again, you should always mark up your picture because that counts as work. And EF is the transversal. EF is perpendicular to AB, so therefore it must be perpendicular to CD based on the um, theorem right here. The line is perpendicular to one of two parallel lines and it's perpendicular to the other. If the measure, measure of CHF is 6y degrees, so it's algebraic, and AGH is 5x plus 4y degrees, find the value of x and y. So it is marked, and remember the supplement to a right angle is a right angle, so I know that 6y is equal to 90, and 5x plus 4y equals 90. Now, of the two equations, we can solve this one for y by dividing by 6. We get y is 15. Now I can substitute that value in over here. Okay, and then we end up getting x as 6. Last page. In number six, we have to find the value of x and y. Well, in this question here, if this line is perpendicular to this line, and it's also perpendicular, this line is perpendicular to that line as well, we then know that these two these lines right here are parallel. Okay? Two parallel lines cut by a transversal. So then we can look at this transversal now, okay? And um, we can utilize our angle pairs. Well, alternate interior, so this would be X because alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so we have um, a linear pair right here. So we know that X plus 2Y equals 180. Okay. We also know um, another relationship we can use this linear pair, but let's slide 
this angle here, just focus on the, let's grab purple, well, let's grab yellow. So this angle, let's use its corresponding angle, 